Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. Let's make a cool mystery braid cuff. And these are super popular because it looks impossible. It doesn't look like it should work. It's a breeze and I'll show you exactly how it works. Now, with most of our tutorials, we're just gonna make a simple cuff, but use this as a jumping off point for a hundred different directions. I love the mystery braid and I put it in a lot of places. First off, mystery braid belts are one of my favorites, but also wood carrier handles or gun case handles or purse handles because it's a very comfortable feel in the hand and it'll hold a good bit of weight. Now, you can use all kinds of leather, but we need to stay above a four to five ounce leather. I need some body with it because if I go too light, my strands are gonna curl as I move through the braid and it's not gonna look real clean and consistent. But if you have a beautiful leather that's a two ounce, maybe three ounce, just knock a backing onto it and it'll work just as well. So again, jumping off point. Now, here's the thing though, with our weights in leather, we're gonna use a four to five ounce natural veg tan. This is three quarters of an inch wide and I'll show you in a minute why we're gonna go with three quarters. And I've cut this at about 12 inches, giving me plenty of room. So the first thing we need to do though, is get a measurement on our wrist. Now you can certainly take a tape. If you don't have a tape, simply take a piece of thong or lace. We'll wrap that around my wrist. That's my wrist measurement. Now, one thing here, I need to add a little distance for two reasons. First off, I don't want this tight on my wrist. I want it to be a little bit loose. But secondly, when I do a braid, it's gonna chew up a little real estate. So I need to add some room for error there. So my wrist should be about a seven. It is, so I'm gonna add one inch to that. Now, this can get confusing, but I'm gonna keep an eye on us. Our eight inches, my wrist plus one inch, is my snap to snap measurement and not my end to snap. That's confusing, but I'll show you what I mean and I'll show you how to keep an eye on that. So let's go ahead and measure our strap. Now our first measurement, I want one inch past this snap so I have room to make my round end punch. So we're gonna come in from the end of our square to one inch. That's our first snap hole. Now, this is why this can be confusing. Now, if I'm gonna go, my wrist, seven plus one is eight, well, I'm gonna start here and go out to eight inches, that's gonna be wrong because my snap to snap distance needs to be eight. So I'm gonna move that back to there. Now I'm gonna drop in eight and then I'm gonna mark my end and I'm gonna trim that. So that should be a clean, perfect fit. Now we're gonna punch a round hole and a round end punch and that's gonna make this look very professional. Now, of course, the tool, always preferable. The round end punch makes this very clean, but you can also cut by hand a round end and it won't be perfect, but it certainly will be close. Nice, my ends are clean and punched. Now we're gonna take an eighth inch round hole because we're gonna use a snap here. And a snap, the post is gonna fit nicely in an eighth inch hole. It's gonna be a little snug, which is just right. Very clean, we're a step closer. So clean and professional. Now we need two parallel lines down the middle of our strap to make our braid. There's two ways we can do that. We're gonna use a leather lace stripper, which makes it very clean and easy. It's a great tool to have in your shop. But if you don't have that tool, I'm gonna to show you how to cut two parallel lines by hand, and it's relatively easy. So quick overview on this tool. This is a leather lace stripper. What I can do is lay a blade in between each of these plates. This block just comes off. Now it may be a little hard to see, but I've got two blades placed in here, one at a quarter inch, one and a half inch, which for a three quarter inch strap is gonna be perfect measurements. Now I can take my, my cuff and I can pull, there we go. See how those two blades, the, the leather will sit down on those two blades. I can draw this through. Look at that, two clean parallel cuts. How easy was that? But if you don't have the tool, let's cut one by hand. Now, a couple of tricks to cutting by hand. I'll show you every one of them. First off though, if you've ever tried to make a, a single cut, much less two cuts down a thin piece of leather, it can be very difficult and very frustrating. I'll show you exactly how to alleviate that problem. Now, we need to measure. Let's start there. So I'm gonna take my square, 
I'm going to come in three quarters of an inch or a half of an inch, it's up to you, and I'm going to make a mark at one quarter of an inch and one half of an inch. Now, let's flip our strap around, square to my edge, come in three quarters of an inch, mark at a quarter, mark at a half. All right, so we're marked. Now, here's two big tricks right off the bat. Piece of scrap, same thickness or less, so I can shore up my straight edge. If I don't have that, and I press down, straight edge is going to pop up and I'll get a squirrely cut. Secondly though, and super necessary non-slip tape, because I don't want him moving up, down, left, or right. I need a good clean cut. Now, I'm going to cut to the marks closest to me, but I'm going to leave a little bit of room in there, so the pressure is on the strap and not on this piece of scrap. Now, I'm lined up, now I'm going to cut the hole, cut again to the marks closest to me because I can see that. Now, one big trick on your blade. New blade, sharp blade, every project, every time. And here's the point there. If I can't make a cut, a single cut through this and cut through, I'm going to need to make multiple cuts. But here's the great thing. What I'm actually doing there by making multiple cuts is I'm taking less pressure and more control. So I'm trading pressure for control and that's always a good call. Now I'm going to keep my blade angle good and low. Going to do two things. Going to keep it from jumping my square and, well, ending badly. But secondly, because if I make multiple cuts, then my blade is going to follow the previous cut. Nice, very clean cut, parallel. Just what I'm looking for. All right, let's scoot that out a little bit. Let's square to our marks. Add some pressure and plan on making two cuts or even three if we need to. Need to. Very clean cut by hand, good edges, parallel lines. Well, this looks great already. Let's step over here and braid this. Now, this is going to look confusing to begin with, but it's not. You'll see exactly where I'm going with everything. First and foremost, nail on my table. Best friend, worst enemy. I just have nail holes so I can drop a nail in, but then I can remove it when I'm done so I don't run my hand or my project across it. Okay, so let's back up a step, though. We're going to do a three-strand braid. For those of us that have not done a braid, it is simple enough. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right strand, cross over the middle strand. It becomes the middle. Left over the middle, it becomes the middle. Right over center, left over center, easy enough. Three strand braid. But what I'm not big on is this little gully here. To me, that just looks odd. So I tend to go under for my first bend. Under, under, under. So now, that tends to just look a little more consistent to me, a little cleaner. All right, we're doing the same thing here, three strand braid, but we have to count our turns. Now, this won't make sense right now, but you'll, again, you'll see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna do four turns, I'm gonna untangle, then I'm gonna do two turns, untangle, that will be one set. So, under, two, three, four. Now, we've got a mess down here. You won't have to make this step when you get the hang of this, but if you notice, my right strand comes down through. So when I pull everything apart, there's my right strand. I'm going to take the tab, go up, over, and down around the right. Now, still got a mess, but we've only done four turns. So there's number five and number six. Now I simply pull those apart, and that wants to jump through there. There's a set. Now I can let that go. It's not going to unbraid on me. But here's the big thing. Because I need room every four and then every two turns to untangle, what I need to do is start very tight. Two, three, four. Now I'm going to take my tab. I'm going to go up, over, and through around that strand. Number five, number six. Then I'm going to simply pull that through. There's one set. All right, second set. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to spread that. I'm going to take my tab, go up, over, 
and through, basically I'm going around that right strand, there's number five and number six. Now, here's one of the keys. I want to get as many sets in my cup as I possibly can. That's one set and it doesn't look very good. There's two sets. That's what we're going to work on here. Looks pretty good. But if by chance I can get three sets in there, that looks great. A little more supple leather, we might be able to pull that off. But for right now, let's just keep it simple. All right, so I've got two sets in here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it on my nail. Now, I'm going to relax the braid. I don't have to rebraid it. I don't have to untangle it because you'll see this braid's going to feed this braid. But now I'm reversing that. So I'm going over the center, over the center, and again, just relaxing a little bit. But you can see how this braid is feeding this braid. Nice. Now, that's actually pretty consistent. But let's go ahead and flip this on our nail. And we can flip this as many times as we want. It does not matter as long as our braid is consistent. So I'm just going to fine tune a little bit. There, that looks pretty good. Now we've got one more step. I'm going to take the cuff and I'm going to run that over the edge of my table. This is going to set the braid. It's going to soften it just a little bit. And it's going to make the braid a little more consistent. Well, that looks pretty good. Nice braid. So, last thing, we're going to set a line 24 snap and we're done. Well, that looks great. Happy with it thus far. Now, if you want to bump up to doing the mystery braid belts and you go up to maybe an 8 to 9, 9 to 10, you can wet the leather. It's going to make it a lot easier on your hands. Just be cautious because it's real easy to ding those top corners and it starts to look a little bit rough. All right, so setting snaps. We're going to use two very common snaps. Well, we're going to look at two. We're going to use one, a line 20 and a line 24. Line 20 goes up to about a 5 to 6 ounce, give or take, and a line 24, 5 to 6 ounce, up to about 8 to 9 is pretty much the max. But we're going to use a line 24 because it's a very easy snap to set, and we're going to use a line 24 on a lighter weight simply because it's going to be a little easier to see, but it's going to work the same way. Now I've got snaps set out here, so line 20, line 24, you can see the difference in the cap size and the difference in the post depth. We're going to go with the 24 simply because it's easier to see. Now I've got these set in groups. Uh, with a line 24, here's the great thing. If I mix these two female pieces up, it does not matter. Those are going to bite. All I'm doing here is I'm riveting the female piece onto the strap with the front or the back post. So I tend to start on the back, drop that on my, my slab or my marble. Now I'm going to take this piece. This has the inner flange on it. Now again, if I reverse these, it's no big deal, but this is the way they are typically set. Line 24 setter, going to drop that right in the post, give that two good clean pops. Now it's still spinning a little bit. I don't want to hit those so hard that I knock it into next week because that's going to draw the flange in and the snap won't bite. I just need it on my strap enough to where it doesn't spin. And I don't know if you can see it, but that post has simply curled down inside. Now we've set our back flat. We're going to take our other side, our cap, and we're going to put that in our anvil so we don't crush that. But here's something that can be confusing, and I'll show you why. Now, this is a cuff. So my snap, and isn't that gorgeous? That's one of our teal, uh, teal or turquoise suede. Anyway, I'm going to be wrapping this around my wrist as opposed to the two pieces coming together, say if I were going to make a keychain. Now, we need to pay attention to that, but almost always your cap is going to go to your top grain. So I'm going to flip that in. I'm going to take my female, same thing as the back. Two good pops, still spinning just a little bit. One more, and we have a nicely set snap. So that's easy enough. But talking again about the keychain, if we want this to come together, simply take your back piece and flip it so your two females are together and they bite. Well, that is just gorgeous. Now, one thing on setting snaps. 
kind of think outside your project here because if you blow out a snap on your favorite bomber jacket, purse, bag, duffel, holster, you can replace your own snap in your own shop in two minutes and pennies, right? Okay, so the downside to that, you're gonna become very popular with friends, neighbors, and relatives, and maybe that's information you ought to keep to yourself. <laughs> but anyway, simple cuff, but use this as a jumping off point into a hundred different directions. I hope you make some great cuffs. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.